Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be creating a card using two different stamp sets from Paper Smooches. The first is called Fun and Flirty and it's a brand new stamp set. And the other is called Comforting Hugs. It's a stamp set that came out a little bit ago and I never had a chance to use it. I was really, really sad about that. So I thought I would break it out and use it on today's card. Starting out by using that dog stamp from the Comforting Hugs stamp set and stamping it onto some hot press watercolor paper. This is Arches hot press paper and I just used some Versafine Onyx Black ink to stamp the dog. I'm going to be watercoloring with a size 2 round brush today and I'm also going to be using some distress markers. Last week I received a comment on one of my older videos where I used distress markers from one of you guys wondering about how to best watercolor with distress markers. If there was a better way to do it, they were having a little bit of trouble. And that reminded me that I haven't really shown distress marker watercoloring in a while. So I thought I would break out my distress markers. I started out with Rusty Hinge and just scribbled that out onto a slick surface. I like to use sort of this DIY palette that I've created out of some laminated uh, plastic and with a piece of white cardstock underneath so that I can see the colors on top. This is the perfect palette for smushing down some ink pads or scribbling markers on it. Anything where you want to be able to pick up the ink of, with a brush. So unfortunately that rusty hinge marker was a little bit dry so I did end up using a rusty hinge ink pad and just smushed that down. And when I did this, it reminded me why I kind of switched over to ink pads instead of markers. I started out doing distress watercoloring with the markers exclusively, and then eventually I switched over to the ink pads. And the reason is that you just get a little bit more color payoff when you use the ink pads. I think um, if you're using the distress markers, there you have a little bit more opportunity to do more really light layers of color and really building that color up. But after a while when I was more comfortable with watercoloring with distress products, I was uh, able to go straight to that more intense color. So if you are a beginner to this distress watercoloring, you might want to start with the markers or you could go straight to the ink pads. I know a lot of people really love the ink pads for a ton of different techniques. So they're actually a really great investment because you can use them for watercoloring or for these other inking techniques. So after I had the dog completely watercolored in, I dried him with my heat tool just to speed up the drying process and make sure everything was completely dry. Then I took my scissors and cut him out. I cut right up to the line of the image and just rotated the paper more than my scissors. That's how I can get a really smooth cut line. Now, even though I was very careful when I was cutting this out, there were some areas where you could tell there was a little more white sticking out of that line area. So I took a black brush chip marker. Uh, today I'm using a Tombow black marker. And I just painted the edges of this little dog here. When you paint the edges, it takes the white core of the cardstock and makes it black. And it really disguises any areas that weren't cut out perfectly. It's one of my tips that I give in lots and lots of videos and it's because it's so important. It makes your images that you've cut out look perfect. Now I noticed that the eyes on this dog were almost the exact size of these googly eyes that I have in my crafting stash. So I grabbed my Ranger Multimedia Mat. It's a great glue, it's a great adhesive, and I put a quilled precision tip on that bottle so it's a little bit easier to use. Just squeeze that out onto that eye area of the dog and then use my tweezers to bring over the googly eyes. Now I'm going to be putting this dog on an action wobbler. So once he's on that action wobbler and he starts like jiggling around Around, those eyes are really going to be fun. For the area behind the dog, I decided to do a little bit of ink blending. I'm starting out with some uh, yellow ink from Simon Says Stamp. This is Duckling. And I'm using a mini round blending tool to bring in just a slight faint bit of color. I'm using a very light touch as I add these colors because I want to make sure that the edges aren't too harsh and they kind of fade off into the white of the cardstock. 
The green color I used is Willow, and now I'm using the color High Dive, which is actually pretty intense. So I made sure to kind of pounce off a little bit of color onto some scratch paper before bringing it to my project. And that ensured that I had a really nice soft edge to the whole shape of this ink blending. Now I'm gonna bring in the fun and flirty stamp set. I'm using the stamp that says, I miss your face. And I had someone in mind while I was creating this card and I thought this uh, kind of greeting just, it, it sounded exactly like something that uh, I would say to her, or she would say to me, just one of my crafting friends. So I wanted to be sure to use this stamp. I've manipulated the stamp onto my compact stamp press in sort of a curved shape. And this is going to kind of hug the bottom of the dog after he's been placed on the card. So I'm stamping that greeting in Versamark ink. I am going to be embossing it with white embossing powder. So this ink is a perfect ink for embossing because it's nice and sticky. I sprinkled on some Hero Arts white embossing powder and then just tapped that cardstock to shake off the excess. I then used my heat tool to melt that embossing powder until it was smooth. And then I put to, I started to put together the card. So the card base today is made out of some Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock. So the card base is made out of the 110 pound version of Solar White and then the Miss Your Face ink blended piece. I used 80 pound for, uh, cardstock for that. So I'm just going to adhere that onto the card base with some Tombow Extreme Adhesive. Now, I could have done the blending directly onto the, the card base, but I wasn't entirely sure how I would be putting this card together, so I decided to use that kind of loose leaf piece of cardstock instead. So here's the action wobbler that I'm going to be adding and the, the actual action wobbler is too big for the dog. So I'm going to take my scissors and cut through both pieces of plastic on the action wobbler and trim it down so that it's a small enough size to hide behind the dog's body. So I'm trimming off uh, basically all four sides and then I trimmed off the corners as well so that it would hide behind the dog. So I took the plastic that has the blue writing on it and adhered that to the dog. I put a little bit of that Ranger multimedia mat on the back of the action wobbler and then pressed that down onto the card. And I held that in place just for a few moments to make sure that it really adhered down to the card base. So that is going to finish the card for today. I love how it just moves and dances whenever you tap the little dog. It's so cute. Today's video and blog post is part of a blog hop for Paper Smooches. We are celebrating their anniversary. Paper Smooches has been around for a few years. I love this company. They're fantastic. So if you would like to win their entire March release, make sure you head over to my blog. Every blog uh, blog hop stop has a different price. So be sure to go to all the different stops on the blog hop. Thanks for watching today, and I will see you guys in the next card video.